Hello, everyone. Welcome to Windows Sun podcast number 13. Hello, Hello. lovely people. It's a lovely, lovely spring day here in Finland, but only seven degrees and the sun is shining. So what the hell? Yeah, that's good to be positive. It's not far away from the Finnish summertime temperature, need, which is 12 degrees. I need to move to Austria or Switzerland. Good idea. I'm a jolly good blossom person here today. This is just taken like maybe 20 minutes ago, this photo. Oh, really? Cool. Yeah. So things are blooming. A bit of contrast to your dark heavy metal days, you know? You this, was, this, pink. this is just my background. Like, this is where I'm sitting right now. So that's your leg, right? <laughs> yes, mine. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Finland has it, blessed me. my own lake. In a Finnish scale, that's probably a pond. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, true that. So we got some great questions today. So guys, are you ready to go? Are you fired up? Yeah, of course. Sure. <laughs> blooming, blooming like hell for the questions over here. Oh, this yeah. will be this will be also our first public podcast. Will be released in YouTube later. So mm. let's see how this goes. Yeah, and we're now stiff as hell over here. <laughs> <laughs> So anyone, anyone who's watching from YouTube, you can go to our Patreon and see all the previous podcasts. True. There's a lot of shenanigans and uh, all kinds of revealing and revelations there. Yeah, and also a lot of other videos and, of course, our Windows and Forum, where you yeah. can ask questions for this podcast. And we will for sure answer it. Yeah. All right. But first Absolutely. things first. First things first. Oh man, <laughs> not again. <laughs> but After all, it's going to be a, you know. I'm, but this is actually non-alcoholic. Uh, punk. Hey, oh, so I won't say anything stupid. Let's let's keep it censored. Punk well, I pr hey. probably will anyway. So, so you, you say only stupid stuff when you're intoxicated or? Well, everybody's intoxicated. Wait a second, I need to do something about this. <laughs> so this is Brew Dog Punk AF. Mm -hmm. An alcoholic. It's pretty good. Not the best, but all right. Here, here I have some Vetta Kossu. Uh, Vetta. Vetta Kossu, no ne. At least from a proper glass. This is a that hit the spot. Finnish Itala Ultima Thule glass. I like this. I like the glasses as well, yeah. That was no commercializing, but... Well, mm. I said it anyways. This video is sponsored by... I mean, okay. I like. <laughs> so, yeah. sorry, Yavi, I missed it. I was babbling. Do I we have beer. PSDs for sale? No. Uh, A merch shop? I don't think so. The I, I think we have them in the in the storage. So maybe they'll be uh, at the um, European shop at some point. All right, we're going to check that out. All right, so the, fir sales. the first question is, comes from okay. Salt's Guitar from our forum. And that was, I was about to ask myself. And he says, how are you folks doing? And what have you been up lately? Uh-huh, that's, that's a broad thing. Doing me thing, enjoying another lockdown here in, in uh... Another one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. God damn it. Strict, more and more strict, but I guess it ends in two, three weeks again for a while, or maybe they extend it, who knows. Uh, and otherwise, composing a bit of new things and playing and practicing. And uh, composing, what are you yeah. composing? Well, I've been doing that for many years. I did it in the past in Northern and other ways, but now something might be bubbling. But I don't know when and what. Is it Let's a solo see. project? Yeah, yeah, it's called The Basement. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, that's that's yeah. a good name. Yeah, it's like a good name for goddamn shitty reefs down directly to basement. Basemental. <laughs> yeah, huh? basemental. Hey, what about you, Temo? A... Um, all good here in Switzerland. Um, I mean, it's... Uh... Of course, the Corona stuff is similar here as well. I think now the restrictions are are opening up a little bit. Um, other than that, um, the past month has been kind of 
weird in terms of weather. It was really nice when we had the podcast last time. It was sunny here and everything. And then since then, it's been snowing again and, and raining a lot. And it's kind of on off. So, oh, well. so now you're you in a great ditch there. Yeah, yeah. This is the yeah. Yeah, local river. That's the local weather. Yeah. The local but, ditch. Yeah, but I'll, yeah. otherwise all good. i uh, been teaching a lot. Yeah, like the past few months have been like super busy teaching wise. So I've been trying to take a little bit time off also. This How month. many hours a week do you do? Well, I teach like four full days. Uh, and that's about 30 hours of teaching. All right. Nice. nice, nice. Keeping, keeping busy then. Have you learned uh, yourself anything new? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, new techniques. Yeah, just today I was uh, recording this one guest solo for a Swedish band, and uh, I uh, came up with some cool new licks that that'll be Can you get heard at some point. Name of the band? Uh, probably not yet. I'm not sure when when that's going to be released. Just spill the beans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we will spill them later on. Then. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be later. Right then. Well, yeah, I've, I've been to Mars and back. Oh, that's only. impressive. You like the chocolate bar or what, Mars? Yeah. Unfortunately, I can't even have fucking Mars. Mars used to be one of my favorite chocolates, but like chocolate yeah. bars. Now I can't because it has egg in it. So. Like the, oh, okay. Yeah. But you went but with been... uh, Elon Musk's uh, rockets. Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't need no no no, no he, he own, own, own rocket yeah. of course we I've got my own fucking rockets going it. around <laughs> like, yeah. oh nice right exactly we don't need yeah. no Elon Musk yeah, I don't need no Musk on my face <laughs> all right um yeah but I've been very very kind of like putting my energy into the live streaming thing which I've been doing since a long time so I had like done for about shit tons of times on Twitch of course Twitch used to be my main you know streaming platform but then I've now slowly and gradually moved towards YouTube as well I'm doing all the live chats there with different guests but then now I started a new episode on my YouTube it's called Lick Hub yeah I saw that. so yeah I learned a lot of like I I I've got a lot of people lined up for next episodes but um uh, like the whole concept is this that you would learn i would learn uh different licks from other people so what is this licking licking thing is it like only fans style stuff or what oh you gotta check it out you gotta check <laughs> it out to know better yeah. you know it's for free though so you don't have to pay shit. Okay. oh yeah. well then it's worth it yeah of course that's <laughs> like you know. it's worth <laughs> Zero. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's exactly. really, but that's really cool to hear that you're extending things. But you're still do, gonna do, continue doing Twitch, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I do Twitch anyways. I started actually by 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 chance. I started to do the cover songs on Twitch, which I was afraid to do long time. Mm -hmm. But then it just I picked up and started doing that because I was I've done that like in real situations as a troubadour performer. But yeah, I like acoustically, did. have you performed in Twitch? Yeah, I mean acoustically, oh, cool. meaning I do it on my, you know, electric guitars, but still, like with the uh, me yeah, yeah. and the guitar and the microphone. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Pretty much. So it's it's been it's been going slowly and gradually, you know, building up. But uh, that's what I've been busy with. I've been busy being in this box of the workspace that I have for a very long period of time. Else than that, pissed at the weather, so. But it's getting better. The, the, yeah, yeah. Most Slowly, of the time, but you come here, the sun is shining. Man, you have your own pond there. Go for a swim. Yeah, <laughs> but it's frozen. Drill oh, well. a hole. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, yes, exactly. That would be the case. But else than that, everything is kind of all right. The corona situation is just getting people are as dumb as it gets, including us. So. You know, we just don't want to listen. We, I guess it's it's has, Human, been, humans. has been getting oh, better and some restrictions have been lifted. I think I have been following the stuff. What I've been. Yeah, well, there it has cold. been way better all the time, I guess, more or less compared to the mid, mid Europe. But I guess everybody's just fed up with all these restrictions and they don't give a crap. And 
Everything well, if they would have listened in the beginning, then, you know, if they would have listened in the beginning, we wouldn't have come to this point. No, we um, never You're repeating have. the same thing, so. Mm. Like, well, oh, my restrictions! Well, did you listen the first? Not true. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, we, we fiends even have the tolerance that we're at home anyways, but when you put restrictions on, we're like, we don't want to stay home anymore. Now we want to go out, God. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Let me out of here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, so I, nice I, yeah. I've been just sitting home four months straight, not seeing anyone. <laughs> so oh. Just you know, making music, making just music. screaming out from the balcony. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of starting to get boring, but gladly the summer is co coming. So mm. I, I feel. Way more energetic in the spring. Seven degrees and so on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm really cool. happy about like getting a lot of new music you know, done. That's cool. That's cool. That's great. Yeah. A couple of uh, kind of locks opened in some songs that I was battling for a long time. Like this one song had a had a verse that I never really liked. I mean, it was okay, but uh, I guess some people call it demo idols. Like you get used to this old, old verse, no, but you're no, no. or or old riff, mm. but you're not ever really happy with it, and then it's really hard, you know, to come up with something else because you're so used to that. Mm. But I did, and uh, now I'm really happy with the songs verses, and the whole song kind of uh, opened up, and whole song structure is now finished. That's and also also right. Uh, one of my diffi most difficult solos for it. So. Okay. Nice. <laughs> God damn, it's gonna be hard to learn. What? It's even harder than in the secret song. Sorry. Uh, that we played live. I would think so. Yes. Oh, thanks. Well, thank God I don't have to play it live. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's why I said thanks. <laughs> well, thank. Hopefully, it's not me. That is. Oh, it's a bass solo. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Only. Huh? That's good. <laughs> Oh. Maybe I will write, write a bass solo as well. Hey, oh, god damn it, now I'm making yeah. You just had to, right? Well, hey, when are we going to hear the song? Just out of spite. Yeah, but when are we going to hear the song? Any, any day you want to come here. Oh. <laughs> but so yeah. You're, are, you're inviting everybody? Or? Yeah. Who's oh. watching this now? Let's have a sauna night. Oh. Oh, <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, this uh, one album is, uh, that's probably going to be the next one. Strong possibility. I'm really happy with it. I'm really loving the stuff myself. Getting getting the kicks and goosebumps. Nice. But still, still a lot to be done. Yeah. All right, let's get to the next question. This is from Rania, and it's for me. In the lab podcast, you mentioned new demoness is in the making, meaning demoness guitar. I'd like to know if uh, her design is going to be related somehow to the upcoming album. Also, since it's a custom build, what will be special about her? Can you tell us anything about her specs, etc.? When when is this new beauty going to be ready? Why is it a her? I don't know. <laughs> have you exposed something that we don't know about? Well, don't you have a few hers there as well? I only have person. one. <laughs> That's Stacy. That's right there. Stacy? Yeah. Oh. I only have one female guitar. All of them are guys. But it's better to have a lot. A lot of females. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Mm -hmm. Interesting. A lot of, yeah. of Stacy's. Yeah. Well, Can I could go one. go through some of the main specs quickly. Uh, well, Dylan, the main guy who's building guitars, he's um, he says he's probably gonna get it finished by the summer or during the summer. So hopefully, that will happen. Mm -hmm. My fingers are itching already. But yeah, it will have six strings. Actually, he's making two guitars. Uh huh. And because uh, we want to try these uh, different woods. Uh -huh. okay. So 
these two will have six strings, the scale length will be 26.5. The tuning will be drop B flat, although I will use them also for drop C tuning. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, it will have ever tune a must. EMJ pickups, bridge pickup will be head, headset, and the neck will be 85. Ah, so you're going with 85 then. What about the yeah. uh, true temperament, or is it so that you can only have no. a standard tune? Obviously, all right. Yeah, I mean the true temperament in, temperament thing is. Uh, I know it feels kind of hard to get those. One time I emailed them and I, they didn't ever reply to me. I mean, I wish. Well, that was uh, true temperament in another way. <laughs> and one. <laughs> and one guitar I actually owned that I gave to Temu actually. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, and I don't, I, I'm not sure if uh, true temperament works in every tuning because, and I'm not sure even if it does, it does, does it work because that guitar, I mean, it didn't work for me. But I did mean, he change the tuning? Because for every tuning, it's I, I remember, Temu, have you tried it? Have you? Yeah. Tried? I think it helps in, in some things. I mean, it's not just that it works in one tuning, it also works better in some keys than other keys. So, uh -huh. so yeah. like... I guess that guitar was for normal tuning. That guitar was like, not yeah, for e-tuning. And I think that they have these different formulas. And I think that guitar had the formula, which is like for the common guitar keys, you know, E minor, A minor, um, kind of optimized for toes. So those are the closest mm -hmm. in ter terms of tuning. And then everything else is like, a little bit more off but even uh -huh. those are not like perfect so so i think it helps in some things um perfect, but, de perfect but definitely frequencies. yeah i, I mean yes. uh, especially when recording of course it's nice that then you know if you're playing something high up on the fretboard the, the ever tune itself helps a lot with the intonation but then there's still always some notes like notes next to each other one is flat one is sharp it's, I hate it's, it's always like that <laughs> and that's where the true, true temperament helps a little bit it's still not perfect but it it helps yeah i remember testing it uh, like in e and d tuning but there still was like some notes that were way off and that really pissed me off because I, I want all the notes to be how the two tuners says they need to be <laughs> or how like a, like a synth synth is well then on top I'm even just... there you need to put auto tune and then it's like that's, exactly that's that's rock and roll well i'm already using auto tuning the bass <laughs> so next step up is guitars yeah Th there was that pv guitar that had the the auto tune function somehow like it like a digital thing inside never got mm -hmm. to try that but that seemed interesting yeah well, I would wait for a day for fucking the guitar would be made, which is not a guitar. It should be called something else or something like that. But it should be digitalized completely. It's called I mean, MIDI. Like guitar. No, like really, <laughs> it, like make the life simple as what we have as a MIDI keyboard, for instance. Just, you know, you press one button, you can transpose, you can do whatever. Like fucking hell, like have one. Yeah, there, there, there is actually that kind of uh, MIDI guitars that that uh, yeah, but like the, the 80s. Is not the same. No, of yeah, course, from the 80s. Oh God, 80s. not that one. Well, yeah, that is where those? where the, the the strings are more kind of like buttons for every fret and every string. You have like a little button, and oh. yeah, that's Hell how no. get... <laughs> <laughs> cool. But 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 I think it also has the the strings that you can actually plug the strings here. Are you talking not, about? Not like that. There's a button here, like, no, like no. our hero. I know that. I think a little bit more professional version of, but similar to Guitar Hero. Yeah. A bit heavier guitars, otherwise the same. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Some more specs. It will have a set neck because uh, people always say uh, like both on guitars have the most snap and everything like that, and the most attack. So I always use both on guitars uh, both because, on. you know, people know that I bought a couple of solar guitars and they had set necks and they had snap and attack. Mm. So what the hell? And I hate uh, the fact in both on guitars that the screws in the back always get looser and the touch 
changes. And in Sedna Kitas, I feel it's more stable. And I never had any luck with uh, like the set through guitars. They all, the touch has always been like weird. And I don't wait know. a second, I got a bit confused. Not a bolt on, but a neck through. Or... No, set neck is like a, the neck is just glued to the body, but it doesn't go all the way oh, through, okay. through the body. All right. Okay. So I, so I feel like that's the best for now. I mean, bolt on is still great, but I, I always hate it when the screws come over. Then you have to tighten them. And, Screw and, it. And then the touch changes. Yeah. So I, I, I really like stable guitars. Because especially in Finland, the weather changes a lot. So the guitars will change a lot. And I really hate that. Mm. I, I, like stable, sta I like stability in life. <laughs> <laughs> no, Nate. Yeah. Okay. And then it will have extended cutaway, so you can just get higher, it easier, easier to shred. 24 frets, uh, three piece neck, C shape, smooth it around, so no flat back. Uh, neck width, probably gonna be like 20 milli millimeters from first fret, 21 millimeters from 12th fret. So I want these, these guitars to be more like heavy rhythm guitars for tracking, for studio work. The radio is actually something that I've never had before. It's going to be 20 inches. And I actually went to test a few guitars uh, with one of my friends. And the 20 inch really felt great. I actually tried like a flat fretboard also, but that was like too much. It felt like it went the other way. When you look at, look at the guitar, like it felt the other way. Mm -hmm. Like usually it had a bit, bit curl like this way, but it like trick to your eyes because it's flat and you're used to this way so it didn't look like this way so that was like no way this is too much i just wonder how good the bending would be on a 20 inch i think i think the bending is better in you know flatter radius guitars yeah mm -hmm. and you get i think you will get less string bus and it's easier you know to level the frets Depends what kind of bending we are talking about. If we are talking about like completely Eastern classical bending, nothing gets better than the less radius. I mean, like look at sitar, for instance. You have so much of, but like it depends what kind of an instrument you're playing. So that is what you know. It's in my head as well that because I haven't tried yet a twenty inch, so I'm like, I don't know the bend might be. Eh. Yeah. But yeah, this uh, I've always liked. You know, a flatter touch. I feel like it's more fast and more shreddy. And they're like the round radiuses feel like more like guitars for, you know, old farts. <laughs> but we do like That's round. That's my opinion. All right. What else? What else? What else? Then it's going to have nickel, nickel super jumbo frets, probably chess car, you know, FW58118. So I always like, you know, the jumbo frets. Yeah. And I'm going to go nickel because uh, I had also very bad luck with uh, the stainless steel frets. They never felt, never felt like uh, good for me. They feel like stiff and the sound is like stiff. And it's like, feels like you're playing a rock. And uh, actually Andy James has said this, this as well, that he cannot play stainless steel. So, yeah, just gonna go with uh, what I've used to. And nickel frets have always, you know, done the job. And they feel great. Okay. And you know, my first, uh, you know, main section that I used for many years, it has nickel frets and it's over 20 years old and still in great condition. I mean, the frets. Mm -hmm. So, what else? Uh, nuts gonna be craft tech black tusk nut, nut width for 43 millimeters. Uh, thrust rod is gonna be some carbon reinforced uh, low profile two way from Stumac. I don't know all this, but Stumac says that these are the best. Then, then the woods. The first guitar will have bass wood. And the top wood will be quilt maple. And the neck woods will be maple and finger, 
fingerboard, wood, rosewood, and it will be all glass body. Glass, you mean? Yeah. Right. All glossy. Oh, then the second guitar will have mahogany and also quilt maple top. Mm -hmm. And the neck, uh, neck woods, also mahogany, yes. And the fingerboard wood will be ebony, and this will be matte. So I'm going to do some tests when I get the guitars, you know, recording test, which will sound better. Uh -huh. Might be heavy, heavier so will be interesting. when it comes to the weight. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I kind of want them, these guitars to be a little, little, bit, yeah. little bit more weighty. Mm -hmm. So, because I want them to be like uh, heavy rhythm guitars. Mm -hmm. For rhythm, I feel like, uh, uh, especially with thicker strings, I want the wood, uh, you know, not too, uh, like move, move too much. Resonate. Yeah, resonate. If you pick too hard, and then the whole guitar, maybe if it moves too much, I, I don't like, it doesn't feel like t stable. Starting to sound in this B flat tuning already quite basic guitars. Well, it's going a little bit on your territory. <laughs> mm. aye, aye. But after these two, we have. One. I am, you know, ordering also the some new basses. <laughs> <laughs> going further, like yeah, I got this twenty kilo. You should order guitar. guitars, and you know. Yeah, exactly. You should go the other way. Like, yeah, okay. revenge. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. But uh, me and Dylan have a special project after these guitars. Like I have a big brother for these two guitars uh -huh. that will go even lower <laughs> and how long is that gonna take completely invade your territory aye, aye, aye. well it's good <laughs> that it's coming out publicly now so everybody knows it including me so oh including maybe you. i get some support group for this or something <laughs> <laughs> exactly i need some yeah. therapy yeah yeah all right, let's go to next question. This is from this one is from the legend AP Cortelai. It's for Yari Jukka and Teemu. First crowding crowdfunding was success. So question related to that. When you started to think, sorry, when you started to think first crowdfunding and what it would include, how much the final package differs from that what it was in the beginning? Was there something else considered what it could include and was left out in the end? Mm. Well, I, I would say, uh, I think we pretty much put everything that we had yeah. <laughs> available. It was, it was everything. There were discussions, <clears throat> of course, how to do it, but uh, it was like an all, all in thing, I guess. Yeah, I think in, even in the, way more. when we did the extended month, you guys were the ones like pushing me that I have to come up some something a little more. And yes. we came up with the, what is the isolated tracks for time one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And stuff like that. So yeah. yeah. I think we, we, you know, put everything, the kitchen sink and what is the saying? <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's like the, maybe the, psychology for the price that the package was maybe in the head the number was like for some people big but on the other hand the material and the content that was there was like yeah many times more maybe yeah. many the word, times more mm. so i guess after the crowdfunding we were left like with nothing anymore to give <laughs> like we <laughs> we put it all out there yeah. but now we have been building a lot of new stuff and the next crowdfunding could have a strong feeling that it, it, it will have well, even a lot more stuff so but st there's still a lot of work to do so yeah what i remember from like planning it originally like really in the beginning i think we had like a lot of ideas but but we were first actually thinking of doing like a lot of separate like tiers like different prizes and everything. And then we kind of uh, decided to yeah. not to overcomplicate it. And then we threw out a lot of ideas. Like we were initially planning merge, I think, and, you know, more physical things. But then as we looked more into it, we realized that it's 
so much you know it gets so complicated in terms of shipping and everything that then that's why we wanted to do the the all uh, all digital package thing yeah and it was our first time doing it so the whole thing was like crazy and big risk and so we wanted to make it really simple and not over complicate things mm. but we'll see i think i really like this approach you know like I don't like complicating things too much. I like things to be simple and effective. We'll see what happens with the next one. But not in the music. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll <laughs> tend, tend to do <laughs> got you. complicated music. <laughs> but I, I like to, you know, when I build my projects, I really have to have to do a lot of like organizing and keeping things simple otherwise i couldn't handle that chaos mm. so pro tip if you're making complicated music do a lot of cleaning in the projects because it will get cluttered up and you know chaotic really fast so i always have these days okay today i'm gonna do some cleaning up and clean the project all right next question this is yeah, from yeah. akonit and it's for everyone. Imagine the situation when the whole music in the world would be obliterated and you had to leave only one music album in the whole world. What album would it be? And the same situation with just one song. Uh, yeah, <laughs> easy. Uh, Arja Havakka. Hey. <laughs> kaikki suosi, kaikki suosi. Oh, no. And the song would be Hän saavu ei. <laughs> there you go. I don't know that, but I, I, she's think a, I she's a, probably she's would. an amazing bass player, also. Okay. Well, I, well, I really don't have any answer to this. No, I, you, I, no, you I, must. Oh, come on, must. you cannot say this, especially in the first The gun time. is on your head. Stuff. I don't have an answer to this. The gun is yeah. on my head. You must choose. Everybody's pointing. Asin. I choose death. I mean, okay. Um, death, you know, the, the band. <laughs> Symbolic. <laughs> Symbolic. Uh, um, human. Indi individual thought patterns. Yeah. Dear, 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 fretless bass. Uh, well, well yeah. then, then I would go with like what made me start the music thing. You know, I would say that Dream Evil from Dio should be the album because that's how I started. So yeah. that would be the album. And if it were to be a song, then it's Sunset Superman. All right, cool. From the same album. That wasn't that hard, was it? Cool. Yeah. See, that wasn't so hard. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. what she said. I mean. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsie daisy. None. All right. Damn. No, like from my own perspective, then for sure Dio would be nice as well. For me, it would be Holy Diver and probably as, as boring as, as the title track. Clown Holy, Lydia, Holy Driver. <laughs> oh, or that. Yeah, that would be a good second option. But but then but then in terms of like 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 for the whole humanity, I, I, I guess like the, the albums that have like um, resonated with most people, like maybe uh, something from Beatles or you know, Abba, uh, huh? Ab Abba would be nice, or you know, Michael Jackson Thriller. Obviously, I, I think that's the most al sold album of all times. Hmm. No, that has surpassed. There was somebody else as well that really took over. Oh, really? Thriller. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay. Billy Eilish. So that's what I was thinking as well. Justin Bieber. God uh, damn, you have to loop one song all over again. Now I, I want to reconsider some two hour classical See? that it yeah. doesn't going to okay, loop okay, in four it, minutes constantly. Okay, the question was regarding for you or was it for the humanity, basically, that you want to keep this one no, album? Oh, for you. Yeah. Ah, see? So, but yeah. What would you choose for humanity? Barbie girl. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted to say scat man. Type. Scat type. man. <laughs> ah, yes. That's, That's a cool. That's a good one. Yeah. E type. 
far you know yeah, nine themes you wrote this call for the masses no 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 the, of course the song the the scooters latest song what is that the fuck 2020 fuck 2020, oh, yeah, 2020 yeah. hyper hyper <laughs> Either. All right, so I would choose. Uh, Sorry, what theme did you choose? A uh, holy diver. Okay. Right. So I would choose Skid Row, Slave to the Crime. Hmm. Oh. I just love that album. It's the perfect hard rock album. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, and why I I, cho I would choose it is because I just love singing that album. So I could always. Oh, that I know. Sing, sing along with that album. And, uh, that would be all known, right? There's, there's no, there's not a single bad song. Every song is like, like ten out of ten. But the song I would choose would be the threat. It's the third track on the album. That's probably probably the song that I love to sing the most. Okay. Yeah. There's my I thought answer. It would have been Judas Priest or something. No. Yeah. Oh, there's there's pain, another pain band killer. that. Painkiller probably would be the next. Yeah, but there's one band whose name I'm not gonna say. I know it might be that. Four letters. A A A. I um, think. No, the other one. Cold Jean. Ah, Kiss. Yeah. yeah. Hey. <laughs> Let's not go there. Hey. Hey. I would change. Yeah, this it could be. It could be Asylum or Animalize. Probably Asylum album. Or Cold Jean. I, I would go with All the Fools Sailed Away. I changed the song now because that song resonated with me a lot. Mm. That, 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 that's the one. Still remaining in the same album. And you love to sing it. Too. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm not going to change mine. I'll still keep to that one. I think. All right. Next question. Where are we? This is from Erika Evil for everyone. How old were you the first time you made crowd surfing and what band was playing? <laughs> I never done crowd surfing. How lame is that? I was thinking, I don't think I've Oh, no, done no, no. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. I remember maybe some of remember. our first tours, maybe. What? Some of our first tours, maybe after a show, you. I don't remember those. <laughs> you don't continue audience. from there. <laughs> Man, so tell me what was it? No, you tell me. Do you remember something? I'm not sure. Maybe it's uh, I don't know. I've done that in Zagreb. I can say that. Like I remember that. That was after our B ended. Oh, maybe it's Azim that I remember. Yeah, I just went jump, jumped in the crowd. Yeah, now I remember. Yeah. They took me halfway through the venue, and I was like, "No, no, bring me back, please." <laughs> so that was nice right after we ended the first forest tour yeah and uh you didn't break your shoulder uh, no <laughs> not from that <laughs> i'm glad yes i haven't been a big fan of doing the crowd funding i was going to say surfing <laughs> 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 how old was i i was what what was my age it's three years back, so 29. Yeah. Mm. I generally don't do the, you know, ball of death thingy or do the mosh pit thing or even the crowd surfing. Nah, not for me. But you have gone to the States like almost naked. With somebody I know very well. <laughs> oh. Who is that? <laughs> Who just said it? Well, anyway, then what was your answer? That, that, that was like one, one after that. That was like one year of misery for me. <laughs> no, Nate. Yeah. So, Temo, have you crowd surf? I, I don't think I have. No. I was thinking, like, wish, did I do it like after some show as well? But no, I don't think so. <laughs> I think next Close thing we. The guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have done it once. Uh huh. And, and this is this was was in uh, on the rocks, the Finnish rock bar. There's downstairs, and they had a little stage there. And the band Thunderstone was playing. Huh? 
Okay. In Thunderstorm, there's a guitar player called Nino Lauren, who actually mixed the first Winterson album. So they were playing, and I just uh, thought I was a little tipsy, and I thought, let's do some crowd surfing because the mm. mood was great. And uh, went to the stage, gave Nino a, Nino a big kiss, <laughs> then they just jump into the audience and was cr crowd surfing like I don't know. 10 seconds. Then I, when I was surfing, I pointed, pointed Nino like, hell yeah. And he was like, Back. what the hell is happening? <laughs> That's your <Yori Mamba. laughs> That's so, cool. Good times. Really fun. I think that was the show that I was actually guitar teching for Nino on the side of the stage. Oh. Same show. Yeah. <laughs> when was this? This was like, I don't know, 2014 or. Yeah. Yeah, maybe like it that. sounds about right. Six years wow. ago or so. Yeah, but yeah. don't want to do it again because might break some bones. <laughs> don't want to break my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it always the shoulder? God damn it. All right. <laughs> Next question is from Netanya. If you had 24 hours to shop for free at one store, which store would you choose and what would you get? Do one music related store and one non music related store. For 24 hours, you have 24 hours to shop for, for free. free. 24 hours. Yeah. Wow. Limitless. Yeah. Hours. Let's get the whole store then. <laughs> like, yeah, I'll, I'll get a huge truck and yeah, yeah. very yeah. full <laughs> of bass guitars. Maybe what one guitar just to say name, name the store. <clears throat> name the store. I would go to Norman's Rare Guitars. They who knows the best. What about <laughs> what like Sweetwater or something? Yeah, yeah Sweetwater would be nice though as well, but they don't have like any really collectible old instruments. That would be. Norman's I would just go to Palman's headquarters. That's it. Where? They, like, that's Palman. Tomon's headquarter, like that's pretty much it. Like take oh. everything and yeah, well, I was thinking, where's the biggest warehouse of Amazon and just put the robots coming everything <laughs> in automatic line, like trrr, stuff to, for twenty four yeah. hours. This is good answer. Non music related as well. Yeah, good choice. Good choice. But that's all the music related. Now I have both. Both in one. How about that? Thanks, yeah. Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> Tax for tax free things. Yeah, I was also talk, uh, thinking about Toman. So right. just give me everything. <laughs> <laughs> but non music related, maybe Tesla. Tesla. <laughs> yeah. Nice I would thinking. go with Apple. Sure. Mm. And what would you shop over there? The whole company. In 24 hours. iPad, iPhone. In 24 hours. Those you already two. have these. Actually, no. Actually, when we think about the store, because I was thinking about the headquarters, because I was thinking about the technology, basically. That's what I was thinking. But store-wise, hmm, non-music related. Well, hell yes, of course. If we could shop in a way, anything, I'd go to Google and get the supercomputers. Yeah, but that's not a shop. No. Those are not for sale. Mm. I just, I, I just, you know, store my way in. I call that shopping. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm just shopping here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but so to no. sum it up, we want guitars, amps, studio gear, cars, Tech. and computers. <laughs> oh yeah. Who Who needs water or food? Who or knew? Anything? Yeah. Who needs water and ethanate? Well, yeah. hey, if you end up buying like, you know, a couple of, if you end up getting a couple of Teslas and if you are able to sell them, which would be easy, then you're able to get food for <laughs> probably for the rest of your life <laughs> easily. Does Nestle have a store? Then you could get all the water because they own all the water. Yeah, all the, <laughs> all the healthy uh, plastic yeah. bottle waters. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So basically, tech and guitars. 
The tech savage. Who knew? Alrighty then. Next one is from uh, Vale Bike 66 for everyone. Greetings to the Fab Four. This time my question is for Yari, a special quick guest in the upcoming Power Wolf album. How about Saturday Satan, the song? Was it your choice? If so, why? I can't figure out how, how it may sound with your voice. Now I'm really curious. Well, yeah, it's uh, uh, in January this year, I got email from Nuclear Blast, the guy who is managing powerful Power Wolf and just asked to sing one song. I didn't know anything about this. And I was curious, okay, I haven't been really listening to Power Wolf much, not ever been a big fan, but I've heard a couple of songs and kind of catchy choruses and, uh, that I like. And I was curious, okay, what is this all about? And then told more that they're gonna have this uh, bonus album that they will feature a lot of uh, singers uh, performing one of their older songs. Okay, that sounds cool. Maybe I'll do it if I like the song. And and they sent me the song, and uh, it was Saturday Satan, and I really liked the song a lot. And I was in the mood. I was really working on my own stuff, like kind of getting too much on my own stuff. I really wanted to do something else. So uh, okay, yeah. let's do it. So it was fun, fun to sing something, and it was also like uh, like in a range, like this. Uh, a little bit higher, clean vocal, raspy vocal range that I kind of, kind of rock and roll style range that I kind of love to sing. So I took the challenge and there we go. So fun, fun song to sing. And I guess it will be released in July, I think. Interesting. So that does, does it for our forum, Winters on Forum questions in our Patreon. Mm -hmm. And thank you for supporting us throughout the whole yeah. over year. That's so nice of you. Yeah, yes. definitely. Next, next we're gonna take some random bonus questions from our social media. So we'll see. Uh -huh. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> what is coming? This one is from Mike, and it's also for me. And it's a certain question that has been asked, asked quite a few times. <laughs> oh, I might already might know be. what it might be. <laughs> hmm. I well, I'm, already, I'm already waiting if it is that. The what it could be. Hmm. Is it related to times? All right, who is going to make the drum roll? Well. When is time to coming out? <laughs> Fucking hell, I want to know this as well. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Don't we all? Yeah, you I said know. it was done already when Time One was released. Indeed, I said that, and it's, it is done. But not the mixing and mastering. So, Time One was recorded at the same time as Time Two. You know, all the students and the drums, bass, everything has been recorded. But the problem with this, because I was never happy with time one, the mixing and mastering. And these projects are like really crazy. Uh, they have a lot of layering, a lot of tracks. So these are really difficult to mix. So time one was always felt like really compromised to me. So I, I, I'm not going to work on time two. So it's now it's on the shelf. I'm not going to work on it until there's like few things that I need for it is, is to find a great kick sample and create snare sample and then to find a really great rhythm guitar sound. So the rhythm guitars need to be reamped. So thank God I still have the, you know, the DI tracks. And of course I need a really proper uh, mixing and mastering studio. It doesn't have to be anything, anything like crazy, you know, fancy. But just like a symmetrical room and good sound so i can really hear what's going on to mix all these layers especially here the bass and stuff like that so 
that's the answer and that's how has always been the answer and what about a third party studio room no because that will that will cost too much because it, it will take a long time to mix and i will also have to learn the room i have to be working in the room for a period of time mm. so that's why we did the crowdfunding so we would get this like some some sort of a studio for us so we can get this album out at some point but that's the story if you want to learn more about this like you know whole documentary uh, in my youtube channel it's called the forest documentary it's about the crowdfunding and everything so it's a pretty simple story but you know some people maybe still don't understand you know the little details that goes on with that but yeah let's go to other question this is from uara and it's for everyone how often do you usually meet in person to rehearse and settle matters for the band love you guys thank you well we're settling our matters here at the moment in this podcast right <laughs> <laughs> right sort of yeah um uh, well of course it has been a bit different times now during the covid covid times and everything that it's more more remote uh, yeah, yeah now we are on a creative break yeah that as well when did we even see you last time i mean last year oh yeah fuck yeah. it was last week <laughs> uh, getting demented with I no. saw you demo last summer. Yeah, I remember that and Asim as well, but you, we, we didn't beach. see in a long time. Oh, I guess it's better like that, you know. <laughs> 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 yeah, when was that actually? Well, Yuka, you were at my place. Really? Sorry? You were at my place, like, was it? Last year. Yeah, that oh, was so then last August. Oh. Yeah, something like that. Because the demo was also around but then we kind of like you you went away and i flew in and somehow missed each other at that time uh, yeah but right. the new year's eve i have spent with the uh, yari so that was the last time we saw each other yeah, yeah. so about four yeah, months five party. months <laughs> well it, it has been what is that look then i mean it has been way too long of course that would be cool to see all of you guys of course because it's been of course special times so mm -hmm. when it comes to the covid and we're not doing anything active at the moment so. but right right now we are on a creative break so mm. there there's not so much you know stuff to you know to organize and do yeah. yeah but you're working on the albums so yeah. that's mm. what you're doing when when we start you know when we do live shows and you know then of course we you know do skype or zoom goes much more often and then of course see each other yeah but of yeah. course it's because uh we all live in different places different countries only me and azim live in helsinki so. yeah, that is that is true that is of course affecting affecting a lot but it's efficient nowadays of course that you have these things like zoom and skype and yeah video calls and everything yeah. otherwise well, we would have to Otherwise, we would have to write letters. <laughs> yeah, some some bottle bottle letters. Yeah, through the rivers and oceans. But but Winterson has always been the kind of band that there's never been like regular rehearsals in a way. Like it's that never been true. a band that leaves at the rehearsal place. We only had like the necessary rehearsals before the shows, and you know mm. everybody had learned their parts before, and then we'd have maybe one or two rehearsals and then we'd play a yeah, show. Yeah, we're professional like that. We don't need to rehearse. <laughs> <laughs> that was the... <laughs> the... We more, never even had a... honesty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we never really had a, our own yeah. rehearsal space either. Like... Yeah, mm, we've been like... And we always rented... Cheap sheets that have always been here and there. How many re different rehearsal places have we been like? Four, five, six, I think. Yeah. Many, many. Yeah, and then we had one where which was next to my band's rehearsal place as well in uh, Sound 
what was the name of the place? Sound Inn? Sound Inn, yeah, that was in, in Hertoniemi. And then we had another one in uh, Vuotila, next to that uh, mm. boat shop. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, there as well. And then the... Sonic Pump, of course. Where Battle yeah. Beast was once. And... Yeah, yeah, Battle Beast. But these Sonic were not really Pump. rehearsal spaces for the band either. It was like, I think, yeah. Maybe I, I was renting half or, or something like that, mm. and and then like Gary was doing some some like vocal recordings here and there and yeah. stuff. But we never had like a, a fixed space where there would be like all the stuff set up like and ready waiting for us. Yeah. yeah, but I guess it's for a lot of bands these days. Like like for example, Periphery, they have kind of similar arrangement than us. They don't have even a bass player live, except the MacBook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they have three guitarists. Maybe maybe you you could pick up the guitar, <laughs> and we could do some <laughs> cool guitar arrangement. Ah, what do you say? Then then things would be cool, or what are you referring to? What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. Next. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. If let's do so. All right. No, All, I right. Rather... <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah. No. Why not? I'd rather oh, have the bass player. Yari's head probably. Oh, that went easier than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> but but now that I'm not playing guitar anymore live, I could you know play the bass and sing. Oh. Well. <laughs> you need to do what you need to do then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be easy. I'm stealing your job. Stealing. Steel jobs. Steal, 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 stealing, he's stealing he's my job. He's the steel jobs. Yeah, steal, <laughs> steal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> steel, jobs. steel jobs. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, well, it would be cool in a way. I miss those times, though, that, that there were like weekly rehearsals just hanging around. But in other bands. <laughs> yeah, I guess you, you and Norther and me and Ensifer, we did yeah. it more the old-fashioned way. That yeah. was back then. Totally. Also, Imperanon did, did a lot of that, like weekly yeah. rehearsals. Cool. That sounds so, you know, far away. Yeah, that sounds like a different times. person, not even me. Ten years ago, probably, I had a band which did that. I don't know. Which band was that? Good question. Uh, I think that was the Nabil one. doesn't remember his band. <laughs> There's so many. The Nabil one was probably the one that we had the you know rehearsal room right next to the sounding. Oh yeah, yeah. the Battle Beast place. It was, right? No, no. Amoral had the same space. Oh, as was, yeah, yeah. It was the Amoral. Yeah. 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 Okay. Right. Us, and then you guys were on the other side. Some other. Band. But now you are on the right side. Right side. You use. Like, yeah, right. Yeah. All right. I mean, we do have a rehearsal place with Damnation Plan. That's a different thing. But, but do you rehearse do you use? weekly or? The band has started rehearsing without me because I'm just the vocalist. So I'm the last person that goes there. Like. So. <laughs> They have started to rehearse, like the possible gig that we have in August at a festival. Okay. So we have started to work on, and I'll just step in for, you know. Cool. We, which festival? The Dark River Festival. Okay. And that was the last year that I did the Troubadour show at, if you guys recall. Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah. Where was this? It's in Kumi, in okay. Finland. So we'll see if that is oh. happening. How long drive was it from Helsing? One and a half hour maximum. Okay. It's in the like surroundings of Kotka. Yeah, all right. It would be cool though that festivals would happen, hopefully, but worldwide doesn't really look too good this year. Hopefully I'm wrong. Uh, but it would be cool. Hey guys, do you, by the way, because I haven't read about it in a few weeks, but there was an experiment in Spain like 2,000 people or 5,000 people in a venue that the ticket included a quick test, antigen test, and a FFP2 mask. 
Wow. They made a, like a governmental level experiment out of it that I don't know how do they handle the quarantine after that. Was it 2,000 or 5,000 people? But anyways, that will there be uh, contamination like there? And how yeah. would these work? Then When's the, the results coming in? I don't it know. came or I think it came already. I think like they okay. they they uh, said that no, at least no uh, bigger chain of of uh, yeah cases was was found. I'm not sure if there's there's like yeah. zero cases. I didn't. I just saw the headline. It said okay. that uh, it, like yeah, it, there was not a chain uh, happening. Interesting. Because, Because they, right they now in properly that might. A positive impact from many things. It was a kind of like a festival show that happened in New York as well, but 3,000 people. The punk thing. Some punk I think festival so. something, or something. Yeah. Yeah, so something about oh. that as well. Hmm. All right. Oh, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, we have uh, also, we just canceled Numerok with Smackbound, and we have two more still, I think, that are about to happen but probably are going to be still cancelled john smith festival and there's uh, one we have together with true cult club and smackbound as well that's yeah, happening turku. the one in turku yeah what, what was it called some rock in the city or something turku rock turku rock probably yeah. sorry yeah, the festival yeah My bad. Ho hopefully it happens would be <laughs> nice would be really nice if it happened but uh yeah I'm not holding my breath. Well, Finland's situation, of course, is, has been way better than many other countries. Yeah, that's true. But so, yeah, who knows? Yeah, we'll see. No one knows what it's like to be the bad man or the spider man. <laughs> All right. Next is next one is from Alex, and it's for Yari. Uh, let's see. In your previous updates, you mentioned that you had a space-themed album, a hybrid debut, debut slash time one album, and a mysterious third album with some awesome melodies. You've also mentioned that one of the albums has jumped ahead and is nearing completion. Can we know which of the three albums is close to being finished? Hope you are all are well. well thank you. They're doing really good. So the short answer is no. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. You know, what would, what would be the fun in that? So I, I will reveal details later, details later. Because I'm not even sure yet if this album will be the next one. It's just looking very strongly that it will be. And I'm very, the most excited about it. But yeah, you are correct. There's the space album. And this mystery album, and the, and this uh, debut last time one album, and I I want to do them all, of course. But right now, this one album is uh, gaining more, you know, traction. So that's all I can say for now. But little by little, I will start to reveal more details and. And uh, when we do the crowdfunding, then everything will be revealed, of course. So you just have to stay patient for now. All right, let's go. Next question. This is also for me. And lucky you. It's from Dennis. <laughs> Does the new album have a theme yet? Well, yes, actually, two of the albums have a very, very strong theme already. And uh, a lot of lyrics written, and like all the I've thought about all the you know the artwork, and uh, have a very very strong idea what what it will be. So, yes, but don't know yet which one will will be the next album. So we'll see. All right, next one is from Mikel, and it's for Yuka and Temo. Uh -oh. But he says, actually, this one's for Jukka and Heikki, but Heikki is not here. Well, Heikki is the uh, drummer of Fintroll, and he was doing some shows with us also. Killer drummer. So Jukka, do you, sell, do you see yourself ever doing anything with Norther again? 
know that. Oh, yeah. nobody knows. I personally could, yeah. Personally, yeah. Come back. Why not? At least some sort of a kind of like a nostalgic moment. I don't know, but. Uh, but you said you were writing some stuff. Yeah, 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 but that has nothing to do with Northern. That I can, that I can promise. So you like to keep it mysterious as well. Yeah, I guess we <laughs> learn from the so greatest. Let's keep it mysterious. Mystery man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Same but, uh, Yeah. I, that would be kind of nostalgic and cool in a way, but I don't know how it would be possible to arrange. I mm -hmm. don't know. Maybe that's a seed to do, go onwards and check it out. Maybe. Same question for Temo and Imperanon. Well, we have, um, I don't know if it would be realistic that it would happen, but if it was about to happen, I, I wouldn't mind being part of it. I think it would be cool. Um, but I think everybody has so many other things in their lives and, mm. you know, other careers outside music with the other guys. So, mm. so I think yeah. that would be um, hard to organize and do it like properly. Um, but it could be cool, maybe at, at some point later. Do you have any riffs and, or anything that could fit that? Well, uh, at the moment, the, the writing ideas are mostly going for Smackbound. And uh, um, now we finished writing the second album and starting recording it soon. It should be out like probably early next year. And yeah, then... Cool. Uh, yeah after after that uh, yeah i don't know some other other projects probably like like uh whenever i'm writing something i'm of course like saving it on the phone like i, I guess all you guys so there's the riff and lick library there and then you know when there's a need for mm -hmm. for some song then you can go there and pick things that fit but yeah probably not like i haven't written anything like with imperan in mind uh, if if that mm. is, that's what you ask. So what about this? Then, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So what about the second Smackbound album? Is it uh, gonna be similar stuff than before, or new style, or anything you can share? Just wanted to ask the same thing. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'd say it has similar uh, heart. Um, it's maybe even a little bit more straightforward in ways compared to the first one. Um, so let's rocky. Yeah, yeah. Trying to kind of uh, really find the the um, the core elements of the songs in a way, and really focus on making those like really strong in a way. So um, like our guitar tech says that if the part part doesn't have vocals, it's shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and of course, Smackbone is a very vocal-driven band, and and uh, you know, Netta, the vocalist, writing, writing the lyrics, and you know, she's got a lot to say with her lyrics as well. So, so yeah, it's a different project. And what's fun about that is is the way that we write, which is getting together and and having these strong writing camps. So it's not really either that there would be like a lot of um, riff ideas planned beforehand for for that stuff. It's more like uh, Thing that happens in the moment more. All right. Well, I could actually throw this question also to Azim. Do you see yourself ever doing anything again with your former bands that you don't, that you are not in anymore? Isn't Key was actually doing like a? Names. Isn't Key yeah. was doing actually a comeback <laughs> thing, right? Key yeah, was doing it with the original lineup. Okay. No. Not the second lineup. So good on them. But um, I don't know. You have plenty of bands. And I would think about like think about doing something again. Would be the Nabid one because we were ahead of time at that time. Like we were really like if we what really kind of stuff like, was it? It was what Ginger is doing today, just okay. ten years before. All right, all right. So it was quite interesting. Like we were partially in between carnival um textures 
bit of Opeth. Yeah, it was it was a very interesting blend. But um, yeah, then I joined QS and I left Nibir One because I didn't have time, or so I thought. It was uh, just weird ending in that sense. So was it just a three song EP or something, or was it actually not? Yeah, actual we released, with me it was three three song EP that yeah. we released, and um, yeah, that could be something that I would. I could think of doing, but like now everybody has their, like the only person that has stayed in the music, metal music world is probably me. I mean, Lauri Koskin Niemi does musically things as well. He has written some game scores and things. He I was think in so. Europe, okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because he was in, in the Imperinar as well. Hmm. And uh, so we all have, you know, crossbreeded somehow. And, um, and uh yeah probably that's the only one i don't know about the rest of the guys i know for sure that the bass player is not doing anything musically and uh yeah it's like bold and the beautiful here in finland with all the bands <laughs> oh <laughs> depending uh, on the band right exactly like, yeah but that that could be the band that Every, I would like. everyone's doing each other bands so now you told the whole plot of Bold and the Beautiful. Yeah. Right, exactly. That's it. I never I need to start watching. I did actually do something about Self Blind because there are only two members left in Self Blind. That was my second band in Finland. And I did, uh, you know, did relearn a couple of songs on my Twitch channel. But that was interesting. But only if I would have time, then I would kind of, only if I would have time. Then I would do something about it later, but I, at the moment, I don't see with the whole the projects that I have, like just recently releasing as well the um, album with the side project, the circle. Don't you ever get overwhelmed no. with all the bands and stuff you're doing? With stuff that I'm doing, yes. Can with you the keep, bands, keep no. the balls in the air. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that that solar sounds like waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it can get like overwhelming because there's so much to do sometimes. But like when you have focused on one thing, you get that thing done, and you move on, and you move on, and you move on, you keep on going. I don't think there is um, there's anything bad about it. No, but it's just yeah. focus is something that if you're able to. Anybody's able to do anything, basically. So, yeah. but it can get really hard sometimes. Exox, exox, suction. I was going to say, exhaustion is definitely yeah. something that comes around <laughs> very often. Suction comes around very often. Excuse me. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, oh, it's yeah. good if you can keep the balls in the air. Mm hmm. Right. Keep them afloat, if you say. Yeah. If you may. Yeah. Nick. <laughs> Next <Say> question. <laughs> Next question is from Son of Winter and Stars. And it's for everyone. Which black metal bands would you suggest? Immediately got one in mind, but actually it's music wise, it is black metal, but theme, theme, thematically, how do you say, theme wise, it's not, it's enslaved. Uh -huh. oh, you really like the new album? I really like the new album. Mm. I I haven't listened to that band in years, but of course it's way more progressive and not so black metalish anymore. But uh, music was good. Yeah, yeah. One band I would say that I got into after a long time is Satyricon. Have right. they done anything new? Not the latest album. Yeah, yeah. a few years ago, right? Deep call it up on. Yeah, Deep. okay. Uh, I've missed that. That was a good album. Okay. That's kind of kind of like like lighter sound that they had. Although the style is there always being, but it's kind of like cooler. Well, kind of like, I don't know. And the, the themes that are there. Just, I I like the new latest album. Cool. You, yeah, you said to me that it's a really good album. I haven't still checked it out. So I haven't I haven't actually really listened to black metal a lot in a long time. 
but you know, for me, the old bands, you know, the classics, this section, mm. Emperor, Dark Funeral, Marduk, Satyricon, Limbonicard, Vindir, Limbonicard, yeah, sure. But one of my all-time favorites is Summoning, mm. which I guess is not really black metal. It's more like a, a Lord of the Rings black metal, yeah. <laughs> fantasy, uh, atmospheric black metal. Mine is uh, one that I really like, is Ulver. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, that band has Ber changed Bertha, a lot. The first album. Sorry? That band has changed a lot. A bit, yeah. But <laughs> Bertha and Nut and Smadrigal, great albums. Is there new stuff like really, like almost pop music? Yeah, yeah. I remember there was one, one really great song I heard. Stuff. Yeah, it's good stuff as well. Definitely. Black For me, stuff. one one band, new band that I, you know, my friend sent it to me was a band called Aklus, and the album is called Meli Noe, and I really love the album. It's really uh -huh. amazing stuff, really dark. It really mm -hmm. kind of remind, reminded me of the old Emperor, the, you know, first albums of Emperor. I really yeah. love this. Okay. Hey, black metal stuff, old stuff, not new stuff. I don't, I'm not I'm much aware of the new things, you know. Gehenna, I don't know if they exist anymore. Their I remember album, that oh, never really listened to it. First, first bill and the third album, Malice, they're great. Hmm. Okay. Then one asking, do you have any suggestions? Well, I mean, I haven't been a big black metal guy, but I've made black metal in the past and just released the the circle kind of. It is very high, heavily driven into from the black metal. Yeah, it's a little, little influence. Yeah. That's, uh, that's cool. At least the one. mood. Uh, thanks, thanks. Yeah, I mean, I would say I I listened to when I really listened the first black metal stuff. That was definitely Cradle of Filth. And Burzum as well. Hmm. Those were the oh, first. Ones. Yeah, I need to join this. I forgot Cradle of Filth. Yeah, and least, the, I mean, no, I'm sorry, I don't know about the new albums, but the no, the old stuff, the man. Old stuff, uh, Dusk in Her Embrace, Fifth Empire. Why is it always the old stuff? <laughs> I don't know. Nostalgia, probably. You know, it's the same yeah. thing gonna happen with us. Yeah, nostalgia. Especially Cradle of Filth, Dusk in Her Embrace, Cruelty and the Beast. Median, Fifth Empire. Is there something that I'm forgetting? I don't know, but I'm not it's kind of like it. it's like with Dusk, especially. It's like yeah, kind of like a black metal Iron Maiden in a way with all the riffs. And yeah, stuff. yeah, one of my all-time favorite albums. Yeah. Right. So really that's really my nice. take on black metal in that sense. I, anyways, don't remember the band names that well, and like I just remember the nostalgic moments so that's what i had with Burzum and uh with uh cradle of filth particularly a little bit with borger but not really much i mean like okay satiric horn i would say yes that's that's something that i got like really hooked to i was like holy shit that's so cool because it was so simple yet very black metalish i mean the... yeah Lima borger has some really good stuff yeah they of course as well, an old man's child, but it's more mm. like death metal kind of stuff in a way. Mm. Think, but the first album, Old Man's Child, and the second. I love the Demon Borger album, which, which kind of sounded a little bit more industrial. It was really like the drum and triggers were really, really snappy. And which one? I can't, I can't remember the name. There, there was this slower song. <laughs> Oh, that's a. Uh, what was that album? Puritanical. Yeah, I, I guess. Yeah. Blue covered album. I really love that so. song, especially and that album was great. Demo, do you have any suggestions? Well, besides what has been already said, I mean, um, Demo Borgia was probably for me like the first black metal thing that I got into and and uh, been listening to a lot of the other stuff mentioned here as well, but uh, not like maybe that strict black metal, but Ball Sackoth, uh, really great 
kind of underground unknown band worth checking out a lot of black metal it's not really black metal but one of my all-time favorite bands yeah star fire burning upon the ice from the throne of ultima thule Exactly. Do you remember all these? Battle names? magic. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> like a little. Yeah. yeah. And another one, uh, not really black metal either, strictly, but like uh, death black uh, keep of calcine from Norway. Oh uh, yeah. I forgot. Some really cool stuff. The guitar and... player had a really crazy picking technique. Yeah, he does this like gypsy jazz style. Yeah. Uh, picking. Is it like a? Down, up, down, down, up, down. Thing. Yeah, that's right. That's crazy. What? And oh. really, really fast. Yeah. Oh. And then uh, lately, a band called Karak Angren. Have you heard of those guys? Say it I again? saw them in 70K. Yeah. No. Say it again. Uh, Karak Angren. I, I think it's spelled. Mm. Um, familiar. Very interesting, entertaining to. Yeah. A student of mine introduced me to them a while ago, and and uh, yeah, they sound very interesting. Like a nice mix of uh, of they have a bunch of stuff happening in there. Um, to to me, that's to kind me, that's of, kind of, a, kind of a stuff that I haven't heard before. So that was that was a cool. Um, but to me, the vocal wise, it's too much barking going on. I'm sorry to say this. I just had to let this out. I've said that many times on my Twitch channel as well. Like it's just, just too much. It just literally is barking. So, yeah. Hey, uh, black metal, black metal was. What? That Sorry, was, what? That was evil. <laughs> That's what that is. <laughs> okay. Uh, some new Behemoth songs, really cool. Oh yeah, mm. yeah, good stuff. Although the music is kind of like, although it is black metal, but it's still very death metal. Kind of. Yeah, it's like mixed between death and black metal. Mm. But at the demo was continuing. I'm sorry for the interruption. Yeah. There's nothing against that band. I'm publicly saying it as well. Like I don't have anything against the band. It's just my opinion. I just don't like the style of the. Yeah, it was nice to see them live though. They were fun. They have really great music videos. Which one? Uh, all of them, pretty much. Oh. Are you, you are talking about Behemoth or? Behemoth, yes. Oh, because Asi was mentioning. I was talking about the Karakangra. Oh, okay. okay. Behemoth, of course, with Group Yeah, Behemoth music videos yeah. are totally. But Karakangra has, has good music videos. They are quite conceptual. I wasn't it that band that went to number one in Finnish charts or something. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think they did. Oh, okay. So interesting. Hey, I Don't remember know. seeing some news about this. Yeah. yeah. Check, the, check them out, actually. Yeah. Very charismatic oh. singer, though, I would say. Very, like, you look and you don't want to look somewhere else. You're like, okay. What is What's happening? The Finnish band that has the Satanakia oh. singer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so very, just, very uh, drunk in some festival. Steel fest. <laughs> was it Atzakal? Something like that, I think. Yeah. Or Azatel. 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 Oh, okay. Now, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> now we need to be clear because <laughs> the other one is actually. Yeah. Guy is a Both, are, both are proper <laughs> black metal bands, but. No, no, no. That's an old school. No, now we have. Now we're getting. Mistrack, now we hit the people very precise. Maybe it was Atsatsen, yeah. Like the live stream was pretty epic as well. Like, I believe Yuka sent me a video or something like that. The guy was like, the moment the guitar solo came in, he was the only one sitting in on his sofa. Like, yeah, he was at sofa in his living room at home, and the rest of the band was playing at the actual venue. <laughs> and that was and with the guitar. Two, two camera angles there. And, when oh, the Sopo yeah. came in, he was like, I would like, I would go to get a beer or something. <laughs> yeah, he was yelling something, are my beers cold or not? Put them in the freezer, quickly. That's, that's some legendary stuff. Oh, yeah. hell yeah. C couple more names that come to mind. Uh, Arcturus. Hey. Oh yeah, I forgot about Absolutely, but I, although they have that stuff, but they're not really 
like black metal at all. But on the other hand, yeah, that's one of my faves actually. The first album, especially the last song, uh, Fall of Man. That has, that song really influ influenced me a lot. Great guitar yeah. solo on the song. It's actually Arc just an instrumental song. Yeah. Arcturus has amazing album. La Masquerade Inferno and then the even the newer ones. Okay, I, I actually listened to like last year the Le Masquerade. Mm. Kind of refreshed my memory. Yeah. Kind of fun. Cool but it's it's really weird how how the sounds have kind of uh, gotten old. Mm. Because then you didn't hear because now we're doing a lot of mixing and producing, so yeah. you can hear all the you know shortcomings. Yeah, but at the end of the day, if the song is good yeah. and the sounds are good enough, it works. Yeah, it, has a, it has a great character. Yeah. But the nostalgic point of view, that's exactly what I was saying about in a couple of earlier podcasts regarding the Dio production as well. Like, what? Some of it, like, you go back and you start going, what? Mm. Yeah. yeah. What else? Dan, what, sorry, did you want to say something? Um, so another one was... Uh, uh, the Covenant with the K. Um, oh, I remember. Yeah, that. first they it was with the C, but then they had to change it to K. Yeah, I remember that uh, Nexus Polaris album. Yeah. Which I think also, like, if if listened now, it sounds like some of the so sounds and the production is probably a bit funny, but but I remember it was like a cool album back in the day. There's the one after actually was a cool album, Animatronic or something that went more to kind of like some Manson. Or Rammstein is mentioned kind of thing, maybe more industrial. Oh, industrial. Yes. That was a cool album, actually. All right. As far as I remember, a lot of a lot of old school suggestions. A lot of old. Stuff, I guess we haven't really paid attention hey, to black metal. I have a little bit. Okay. Well. <laughs> so I can say one new band. How do you say? I don't know how to say the correctly but mgla magla i don't know how you pronounce that in correctly but, yeah, i think uh, i've heard that name we yeah. need a black metal history of oh, yucca so. session like we definitely need to have that like, is, is this going or are you are you referring that this is now a waste of time no well, no guess... this is great <laughs> at least every time i have heard like even when we were used to go on tours and stuff like that, you gotta check this out like the bands and things like that that you know about in the black metal world, it's like, what the fuck? Where do you hear that shit from, even? Like, I guess Yuka is the most up to date. Yeah. With black, black metal. Up exactly. One percent of maybe nowadays and ninety nine from the nineties. Ninety nine from nineties. Yeah. All right, let's go to final question. This is some uh -huh. gear talk. I guess this is mostly for guitarist but i guess yuka can also <laughs> join and uh, yuka doesn't have to <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to but you can <laughs> it's like this is some gear talk yeah but like guitar said well yeah the bass player well hey y yuka doesn't have to but it's yeah. gear talk. you you can stick around if you want to but... <laughs> well okay it, bye well, this this one is from gabriel he asked like uh, which amplifier head would you re recommend to get get the Windsor Sun sound? But then he kind of, you know, his Windsor Sun 2004 debut album and Time One. Then he says like Mark V, JP2C, the John Petrucci, or something else. So I guess he's talking about guitar amps, but I guess we can talk also about bass amps. But what is the Windsor Sun sound? Bass amp wise, there ain't any. Really. Well, what, what have you what have you used? What is your favorite? And well, if it's a bass amp, then it's the uh, Mesa Buki, mm. the old, old full. Uh, what is that? You remember what the model? The now? A tube, full tube. tube. Thank you. Old Black tube. Art. I can't remember the old model. I haven't had it in several years. So was was it the subway or? No, 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 no. It's a full tube. I think like just, I'm going to Google it. <laughs> Just to be sure, right? Because I can't remember it anymore. Well, I don't think they you, can, them you can give your thoughts. 
meanwhile. Well, is, the I was for Windows on Sound. Sorry, well, quickly. There you have it. Mesa Pukki base 400 plus. Yeah, yeah, that's the old 400 I don't, plus. They don't produce them probably anymore. Do we use it uh, in any? Uh, yeah. We used on time. We did. Time almost. And we had the big uh, base cabinet. Yeah, we, we the, have that, yeah. The beach sauna. Beach, yeah. <laughs> Different sauna. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we did use them, um, but how much have you been using that sound? Uh, eventually, I have no idea, but we did use them in the studio as, at least as a tryout. Probably gonna use the DI. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> DI and the plugin. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the neural DSP uh, plugin is really great. True. The dark glass, what is it called? It, yeah. Parallax. No, Parallax actually, I like the different. first one more. It, it's just oh, a dark glass oh. suit. Suit, so, suit, yeah, yeah, something. Yeah. Okay. You just turn it on and it's all very great. Yeah, it's really great. Yeah. But then, was in what is the Windows on Amp sound? Yeah, I mean the first album uh, that was the the Mesa triaxis preamp and two ninety power amp and I think it was the uh, PV fifty one fifty four yes. by twelve cabinet. Cabinet, yeah. And then uh, leads and solos were the Line Six Pod Pro or solos and then leads. Actually, first, I guess the yeah first tech... album was for the first very first Pod Pro. Yeah. And then the Tech Twenty One combo for some some uh, leads, I guess. Like melody yeah, melody, stuff. melody guitar. I'm, and, I'm not a physical amp guy anymore. Like I only owned one amp in my entirety. And that I, you it? remember it like demo because I tried to sell it to you as well. <laughs> it was what Marshall is? JCM 800. Wow, okay. Very special head. I don't remember it anymore. It? Yeah, I, but I'm we sure tried I wasn't... to test like A and B, but you were pretty happy with your triaxis at that time still. So, yeah, I'm I'm sure I wasn't at all into Marshalls at that time because we had some <laughs> bad festival experiences where we would, you know, right. get on stage and there would be very random JCM 900 or 800. And also 5150. Yeah, without any, you know, boost pedals or anything, and then you know you would have a couple of minutes yeah, time to, was horrible. to tweak a sound and then start playing and. That was like horrible. So that kind of got me away from from the Marshalls for a while. But but now I've been coming uh, like back to it. I really love the eight hundreds. If you boost it with the with the right. Tube Screamer, um, I've been thinking about actually getting uh, JZM eight hundred. I haven't ever had that, and that's like one of the most classic like metal amps. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. thinking of maybe Reed getting two as well right now. Actually. Yeah, there's three issues, but uh, I would get the the original one original deal was the original deal but like i I've, I've never been the guy like with the apps i'm more into the digital form and i really appreciate what digital world has done to the whole um you know the whole industry basically and hats off to neural dsp for doing all that yeah, as well really getting to the top of the game basically yeah i have to yeah. say they really sound freaking amazing actually so i'm all about neural dsp in that sense right all the way Nowadays, what I'm using mostly for the leads is Tosin Abassi plugin. It just has something. It just has something. And um, like I've been loving Soldano plugin as well quite much because there's so much versatility. And of course, Gorgira plugin is great, but for certain things, it is very specific. Like if you have that certain genre that you want to go after, it's that. Mm. So. Any of the neural DSP plugins, you just pick them up. Like Pliny still is great for the leads. Um, Soldano is great for the leads as well. So it's like I'm I just jump around to different plugins. Amp wise, I can't say shit. I mean, I've owned this PV head. I mean, it wasn't an amp, but sorry, but a rack, and I had a PV cabinet, four by twelve. That was the only gear that I physically had in the guitar world. After that, I was like, hell with this. I'm going to stick with digital. Especially I hate 
to take care of the physical gear like that because it's just when you're not playing it it's just lying around getting you know dust and whatnot so and nowadays with the technology it's such a great you know a b comparisons are sometimes even like the digital i'm a digital guy anyway so digital is winning nowadays in so many different levels and you're able to get exactly the same sound that you have fucking created and that's the thing instead of having that you know miking mic goes if here it, it, mic goes there and if it sounds it's good it is good exactly yeah for sure yeah. So that's yeah. Me. I think it's if it's a plugin or real amp, if it sounds good, it is good. It so. is good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so true. I'm sticking it's, with digital. Maybe some people quick. think too much about it. It's just mm. do whatever if you get the sound that you want. Exactly. But for uh, for time recordings, I think we experimented with some amps. We had a, uh, of course, again, uh, the Triaxis, the Mesa Boki, Triaxis, and Simo Class Two Ninety. Then we had the Mark Mark Five. Then I guess we tried Engel and I uh, the innovator. What. The innovator it was. Was there anything else that we tried? Um, remember, we might have had like my crate just briefly, uh, the Blue Voodoo three hundred watt head, oh, yeah. which is kind what of like a rectifier crate? type. Um, and we might have tried like my Corn Ford briefly for some. Yeah. I guess you could say that the winters on sound so far is uh, been the dry axis and 290 mm. because it's been used on the first album and on time one. I remember the Mark V was very similar to dry axis, just the EQ balance was a little different. Like dry axis had more more of a, like 200 to 400 hertz boom. Like a lot of, lot of upper bass, and lower mids, and uh, but then the Mark V had more kind of hunky 700 frequencies. But it's a good thing about Mark that you have the graphic EQ that you guys just pull the 700 down and yeah, there you have go. To have to. Yeah, but yeah, we ended up with Triax. I guess it was just slightly better, maybe a little bit more attack. The great yeah. thing about Triax is that his it has a really great attack and you don't really need boost pedal in front yeah yeah but but it, it, but it has some downsides like the really booby low mids and uh, maybe little little harsh in the upper mids so that's always been there because there's this there's this presence and dynamic buttons that if you want the attack you need to also get, get the presence up then it the sound comes a bit harsh yeah but but I think uh, the the Petrucci head might actually get a little bit closer to the triaxis than the Mark V, because with the triaxis. I'm tri -axis... really interested about the JP two C. Kind of wanna get it. <laughs> but but you tried it in Levituk, right? Only quickly a few times. But yeah. would love to test it more. Yeah, you can pick mine anytime and test it. All right, I'm actually. Probably gonna do some, you know, sound searching in a few months when I get the demons guitars. So, uh, but I'm actually kind of uh, wanting to experiment with the new sounds for, you know, the new albums. Maybe have different flavor in some albums. So I got the, I actually got the 14 Cali, and I really love that. And the downside of it is quite a bit of uh, like. Uh, mid 700 hunk so you need to eq that out but it's i really like like it's really fast and aggressive and uh, has that same mesa boogie kind of characteristic characteristics but in a different way actually one of the one of these almost that i'm working with i'm now using the 14 cali neural dsp plugin and the sound is really amazing it's like already I use it for the rhythms as well. Yeah. It's slightly heavy on the CPU, but worth it. Yeah, it's really heavy on the CPU. <laughs> <laughs> and exactly. you need to tweak, tweak it quite a bit, you know, quite, to understand it. But it's a really cool amp. And but have you cool. tried Omega? Yes, I've tried it. That's it's, pretty. It's good, but uh, for me, I, I didn't like it that much. Okay. 
I mean, with with slight to tweaking around with that as well, it's quite a monster itself as well. Yeah, you can make it sound good, but it's just not my flavor. All right. But I actually, even you guys don't know, but I just a week ago put an order for the Rev 120 Mark III. So I'm going to get it in a month or two. I'm really interested about that amp. So. Did, didn't you have one of the Revs earlier? Also? Yeah, I had the Mark II, I guess, uh, like some years ago. I tried it, but I didn't keep it. But let's see how the Mark III is. I tried it actually in them and I was really impressed. Yeah, I tried it too. And then I uh, Fishman. Then I watched on YouTube the John Brown. Uh, he made a, like a demo of it and sound really aggressive and tight and a lot of attack. So I've been horny for this amp <laughs> for months. So I finally pulled the trigger and ordered it. So let's see if it's it's gonna be good. Mm -hmm. That precise soft trick you can make there will make it. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> but yeah because i i kind of want for some different albums have maybe some other tone that always do the triaxis but we'll see maybe the triax triaxis always wins what was in the first season <laughs> well that was uh tone lab se it's a guitar guitar oh, yeah, and model model it's the yeah. poor model but that's actually also, I would say, you know, the Windsor Sun sound, especially for leads, because I've been, I used the leads for the time albums, did all the leads with that. And the lead is just amazing, like really clean. You can get it, get it to sound like, like your guitar playing. It's like a synth, there's no scratches or anything when you play it. It's just something magical but it just cleans your playing yeah to, to me i get similar feel with the with the neural dsp quad cortex like some of the lead tones there that i remember from the from the tone lab back in the day i think we could like uh, do a capture of the tone lab in the, in yeah. the quad cortex i think that would be cool <laughs> that would be interesting yeah, i always felt like the modelers for me have been better for leads because they clean up your playing, but then real, like the real amps for me, they feel like more harder to play, especially triaxis. It's like really hard to play and it, it like reveals everything about your playing. But then again, they just are better for rhythm sound. And triaxis is like good teacher because it, it kind of forces you to play tighter. So I guess there's your answer. Yeah. Triax has been the main main king. I'd, I'd still say if, if uh, somebody has a chance to try the original 2C or 2C plus, that's that's the kind of sound that we're going for with the Triax. That's what it's yeah. kind of modeling. So if you have a chance ever to try one, then definitely worth giving it a try. That's also what the Petrucci amp is is uh, basically trying to sound like. Yeah, I guess it's. For me, I, I want that kind of little Metallica sound flavor. It's always been my kind of go-to, the sound that I love. So that's the Mesa, Mesa bulky sound. Yeah. But we'll see what happens in the future with all these different albums. Yeah. But but currently, if the question was like what to get, like uh, I would still definitely also recommend the Neural DSP plugins, checking them out, and then maybe yeah. if you need like. Uh, physical thing for gigging and stuff then the quad cortex is really like the the best in the game for sure i'm actually for leads i've actually been i have the steve weiss uh, synergy 3m that's really cool but we'll see if it's going to be on the next album or not i have to still experiment more but there you go i guess that answers your question so that was, oh, yeah, that was the last, last. question. Dude, Do you guys all right. have anything more to add? Well, that definitely for the people who have watched this podcast outside of our Patreon uh, page, definitely it's 
all up to you guys to support us. It, it would be nice for you guys to be able to come to our Patreon page and support us. You would be able to get like a year worth content there to check out. Yeah. And of course, 12 pa- podcasts. Pa- Patreon.com slash Winterson. Exactly. The, 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 in, the com- in the description should be the, should be the link yeah. as well. Yeah. So thank you very much for checking this podcast out and of course all the support that our patrons or the patrons as we call it have given to us over the year you guys have really really kept yeah, it really help, us helped going. us to go forward and do cool things with Windows on in the future but the main thing is also that all of you guys who are not in Patreon or in Patreon whoever that of course you the, you the fans are the ones who keep us going true yeah so yeah, one everybody. way or the other at the end of the day. So that's the most important thing. And it would be cool to hear on Facebook as well, like and and, and, so, and YouTube, wherever that how you like this podcast and tell us yeah. and tell we have us what the... to do differently next time if there's something in your mind. Yeah, and also of course we're perfect. And also in our Patreon page there's our winters and forum, so come hang yeah. out with us and you can also ask there anything or ask questions for this podcast. Yeah, I'm actually learning a lot, of, a lot about the, the guys at the forum. Like, when yeah. I go check there, Yari is writing something that I didn't know about. And so that's kind of cool as well. That, I guess, goes to say that we don't like uh, have those weekly meetings that often. <laughs> and also, I'm going to put uh, all your guys' uh, YouTube channels in the description. This this episode is gonna be on my YouTube channel, so the next one is gonna be one else. of these three guys' channel. So subscribe to those channels as well. Hmm. All right. So I guess uh, thank you so much, guys, for the support, and uh, hope you had a good time doing this podcast. And uh, we'll see you see on the you next in episode. Next, in the next episode. Cool. All right. Have a good one. See ya.